Hey, it's Bill the computer guy up here in Northern California. How y'all doing? Today we're going to rebuild this Zeus, basically. We're going to put an operating system in it. And so, whenever you work with these, you want to make sure you're grounded. You don't have a lot of static uh, up here in, along the coast. So, uh, I don't normally worry about that too much, but it can happen. So always make sure you use static protection. Now this computer was donated basically for this community center where we have um, several um, community center uh, computers running here. Where, um, I always use this program. Now this program here is a really good program for removing viruses and so but anyway um, what I'm going to be doing is replacing this Dell with this one here this one's this one's problematic basically it's really weird every time I have I use it almost I have to shut the I have to reseat the RAM. It's crazy. Anyway, um, it could be a bad RAM chip or it could be a r bad RAM socket. And supposedly this one is going to be a good one. It's a little bit dusty in here, but not too bad. A lot better than it was. Anyway, um, so we're going to put Linux Mint on it, um, and we've got two hard drives to use. These are pretty small hard drives. Hard drives are kind of hard to tell sometimes what they are. But this one here, this is a 160, so I'm going to use this one. Uh, this, this is all recycled surplus stuff. So. And this one here, this is a, uh, this is an 80 gigabyte. Now this one here got busted up on the end. If you ever have busted up pins, you want to make sure that they're not shorted. Now this one here actually looks like well, it's got a bent pin on it, basically. So we're not going to use this one. We're going to use this 160. And we're just going to put it in here. And then we're going to try and load it up. This uh, computer here is, is pretty unique. It has an air filter up here in front. It basically sucks the air through. And this filter should be changed every once in a while. So, just want to check and make sure the RAM is seated here properly. Looks to be in there uh, square. And then we're going to see if we can get an internet connection. Hook that hard drive up. And uh, see if we... Okay, so... I've got the Linux Mint disk in here, and so the trick on this one is basically if you have a paper clip, you can stick it. There's a little hole usually in the front of these. You can stick it in this hole to open up the slot here to put it in before you fire up the computer. Theoretically, we have everything all hooked up at this point. I was not able to hook my my monitor up, so I've got this small one. I forgot to bring a cable. So let's see what happens. And we're just gonna have to try and boot F12. See what happens here. We got mouse action. So this is going to go through this detection process.
Okay, so this one is going to be pretty good. It's going to be uh, pretty smooth operation at this point. Now I have the Ethernet cable plugged in. And okay, so from what I understand, it's important to make sure that you have internet access when you're loading Linux. Linux may, it may apply to other systems as well, other Linux related systems, VPN, and other related Linux systems. And then this, this computer here, oh, I haven't seen this, I haven't been here for three months almost. This is a community computer, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not used very often. So this is the community computer, and it's got, so it's wanting to update all this stuff here. What is this? Windows update. Okay, we're going to postpone that, because we want to wipe this crap off here. It's got 139 pieces of whatever, spyware, tracking cookies, 139 tracking cookies. You know, and I was surprised the other day, I went on eBay and I picked up like, I just like went on eBay solely and then uh, did one of these scans and I got like 30 tracking cookies just on eBay. I'm sorry eBay, but uh, you know, I just, uh, eBay has a lot of strict rules. I'm sure everybody's got certain rules they have to abide by but you know when you you're loading all kinds of tracking cookies on people's computers you know if they don't know I guess it's fair business you know unfortunately uh, tracking cookies aren't cool in my world mm -hmm. so here's Linux Mint we're loading it up this is Gonna be a 64 ver 64 bit version, and I want to do uh, put this system on another monitor. So, because I've got these other monitors, these other monitors, these ViewSonics, which are pretty good monitors, which have the built-in speakers, and. They also have two different kinds of connections here. I believe this is the newer connection. Uh, may run faster. So I forgot to bring the cable for that. So I'll have to, and I was tripping over them at home. So, okay, so here we have Linux Mint loaded, basically loaded up. And we're just gonna click here, install. Now, you don't you're not necessarily have to install this, but if you carry a disk or a flash drive around, then you could surf the internet, you know, surf privately and take and load everything on RAM. If your computer has RAM, you can, and then when you leave, it's gone. It's completely gone. Okay, so we're going English here, of course, and continue. Now this process takes a little while. I'm gonna uh, gonna now I'm gonna install the third-party stuff. That's the option. So Wi-Fi, etc. This takes probably five minutes. Five minutes to load this system on. I don't know why, how we did that. It's, it seems to be going in a circle here. Anyway, so it's holding up. I actually did not check the hard drive on this that I installed on this. So I, it's it was a do donated hard drive, <coughs> and. Uh, here goes my rant about hard drives for people who destroy hard drives.
basically what happens is, particularly if you're running Windows, if you take a hard drive out of, out of the computer, once it's taken out of its whatever environment that it was raised on, then you try and put it in another computer, um, any sort of random computer, it's not going to work. So there is a possibility if you're like into forensics, you could figure out exactly which uh, type of motherboard the operating system ran on. I don't know, I would imagine. And then put it in that same type of motherboard, although motherboard serial numbers are different. So, you know, it may work if you had the same exact type of motherboard, but the motherboard serial number would be different and a lot of software will read the motherboard serial number and say oh, oh this is not the same serial number as you activated me on and so we're not going to do it so basically uh, particularly Windows uh, often acts like that and particularly if you have some other proprietary software um, on it that has recognized the original serial number on the motherboard. So looks like I'm having a little problem with this thing. It's it's taken too too long to run to the next screen. It actually asked me to install this the third party stuff twice. So I don't know why I'm having a problem here, but we'll soon find out. It may be this hard drive. Like I said, I didn't really check the hard drive for errors and so this is actually the first part of this um, it may be gathering now here if we look down here we see that the the little caterpillar thing there is not going it's stuck so it's probably not doing anything so this one here might have to have another hard drive put in it and I'll see if I can bring that other hard drive and put that one in if this one continues to stay this way. Meanwhile, over here we have 300, no, 139 tracking cookies on this one. It's still running. This is the complete scan for Super Anti Spyware. It's, um, I always run the quick scan when I get off the internet. The complete scan often gets other stuff you don't find in a quick, a quick scan. Lately I've been experiencing long wait times when shutting down. And if you experience something like that, make sure that you run the long scan. Dump all your temporary internet files. Now this other program I've got is basically this TFC. And I like this program. Uh, it's called TFC Temporary File Cleaner. And let's see if we can open it up. We got a lot of things running. We're trying to update Windows. We're trying to scan for spyware. And even though these things can do many things, it's basically it's working overtime in the background if you're trying to do a lot of these things here at the same time. Uh, and the other thing too is if you're on the internet and you're opening different windows, movie maker programs, whatever, while you're on another site, there is a possibility that they have backdoor loopholes in there where, you know, you'll be vulnerable for a cyber attack, cyber takeover. But, you know, computers to me, uh, unless you have some proprietary software on it or your accounting software, your taxes, etc., um, the computers are disposable in my world and particularly if you have Linux. Okay, so we got, we're loaded up here, it looks like. Okay, so we're going to erase everything. 
on this disc because I don't know what it is and so I'm just going to erase it. There's nothing important. And this is what most people do. If they find a hard drive, they're not going to look and see what's on it, basically. Unless they're trying to figure out how hard drives work, maybe. But how how important is your old Windows data? I don't know. Is it worth some tech, you know, who normally works for, you know, uh, a... a you know, several hundred dollars an hour who who uh, tries to recover data from damaged hard drives, is it worth them trying to get into an old hard drive and find data? No, I don't think so. You know, maybe if you were a huge bank, a millionaire, a tycoon, uh, Hillary Clinton, etc., it might be worth, you know, having someone go in and uh, recover some data. But for the average person, no, it's it's not worth it's not worth anyone to take the time to try and intrinsic your hard drive. So here we're trying to it's trying to update Windows. So this is a temporary file cleaner program I use. ADDPCS LLC. Temporary File Cleaner version 4.5. I use this one and I also use C Cleaner. And I always use the C Cleaner or the Temporary File Cleaner after I get off the internet because there's always cookies that jump on your computer. Okay, so here I'm just going to type in a password. Um, I usually type in something like uh, some simple name, like the name of the computer. This is actually an Asus uh, Master Cooler chassis, Asus. And so I'm just going to put, I'm just going to put public. Because it is a public computer. Now, and my mouse is not working. Uh oh, we've got problems. We've got problems, Houston. Okay. Right here in River City. So that should go there and start over. Okay, so we got. Okay, it was just a little slow in the draw. And. We're just going to log in automatically. We're not worrying about this computer too much because this is the uh, Bill Gates Rebel version of software. So it, you don't have to pay for it. Basically, you can buy, you can get it free off the Linux off Linux website. I actually buy my discs off eBay. So you know it's probably not the best way, but it's easy. You pay five bucks for a disc and you're ready to roll, basically. You know, so that's where I go. And so it's just loading up here. And so here we got 139 pieces of malware on this one. Whatever, spyware. And we just click continue. And it says, while not harmful, these items may track surfing activity. Okay, so you wouldn't want anybody tracking your surfing activity, would you? <laughs> Particularly like the NSA? <laughs> yeah, so they basically track everything you do. As a matter of fact, now that we're on the subject, I mean, this thing is like a mirror, basically. If you have a camera up there, they're watching you. I don't doubt it, okay? Some people tell me, oh, the camera doesn't come on unless the little right, red light comes on up there. And I'm like, no. I'd rather, I'd rather have that thing covered up. 
And I leave my microphone on, but uh, I mean, I leave my microphone uncovered, but um, I'm probably going to be covering it up pretty quick. So this thing's taking a little while. It's chugging along. You can see down here, oh, this mouse is kind of acting a little sluggish. You see down here, we see that it doesn't seem to be moving uh, the red caterpillar across the bottom here, but it will um, it will sooner or later run because basically it's loading the fresh hard drive. So. And so what other programs do I have? Now I have the, this one here, I have Malwarebytes. They're probably gonna have a newer version because that's what they do. They have newer versions every, every month or so. You know, those, those ones that give you, you know, more options, basically. This is, these, this is the free version of Malwarebytes. You get the free version. Because I don't like to use my credit card over the internet. And there's a lot of people who do. And if you don't mind, you should probably get two credit cards. If you use a credit card for the internet <clears throat> and another one for your personal banking or whatever, other transactions, I would say you get two credit cards. One for internet transactions and one for whatever the other kind of stuff you got, automatic bill pay, your utilities, etc. I would say you get two credit cards, one for the internet and one for paying like your utilities or your internet service. Uh, because if someone, if you're on the internet, someone hacks into your Okay, so here we got the new version, okay? So at first I was like, no, I don't want the new version because basically it basically it adds more crap to your computer. It adds more little, it's running more shit in the background basically, okay? But I'm just going to go here because I know it's not a big deal. And so now they're going, okay, new version. Now, I could install the new version. The new version is probably exactly the same except that what they'll have is they'll have a pop-up that come up and say, oh, your your new premium version is going to expire in 15, 20 days, whatever. And then they'll count you down every day. They'll, you know, you pop up. You got one, you got, you know, one less day to use this. And the thing about the premium is that I'm not even going to go here, basically. The thing about the premium is, and you, it, it seems basically it's the same and you get the same virus definition see it's checking for updates now it's probably going to come and say oh we got an updated framework for this program this program here will have an updated framework like I said it will have these pop-up windows that are going okay well you got you know you got so many days left for you have to, you know, your premium version expires. The thing, the difference between the premium version and regular free version is uh, the way I understand is that they'll give you the premium version for 30 days and say, okay, you got 30 days and so you're using the premium. This is real time uh, virus detection. And that's great, you know, for people who use Windows and people who are unaware of the fact that they should clean their computer off every time they surf the internet. But for me, I don't need it because I clean it off anyway. Um, but basically, the, the difference between the premium is basically it's, it's got more little, whatever, gadgets and pop-up things that pop up and say, you got so many days and It'll give you little warnings. You should have the premium version because you're not real-time protected, etc. And so when I'm on the internet anyway, I don't really want to be bugged by stuff coming up and say, hey, you need to, you know, pull this uh, program off because I usually 
run these programs at the end of my sessions anyway. It takes a little extra time. But if you want to save your computer from getting sort of hacked with all this crap, then you know, you should clean it up. Or if you can afford the premium version, go for it. Yeah, and send me a donation while you're at it, please. <coughs> please. Okay, so this one here. Okay, so I forgot to create a password. So I need to create a password. So on these, I usually just get something, try something simple. Now, so ideally what you'd want to do is you want to write this stuff down. Because if you lose it, you may not be able to do much with Linux. So, and so that says it's kind of short, so we're just going to keep it simple. Okay, so password. I'm going to keep it simple. Usually I put, yeah, I just write something like, if this is a public computer, I just write password or administrator or, you know, something really simple and then I'll write it on the computer and so that if someone's in public and they're using this then then uh, they know how to get in or add programs I'm not worried about people going into Linux and adding programs or screwing it up simply because it's so easy to add an operating system um, and because this is a public computer, we don't have, you know, it's like not like no one's going to have this valuable data on here. Okay, no personal. There's no personal valuable personal data on this one. Okay, so that's the Linux install, whatever. So it's starting to install now. So again, probably another five minutes or so we'll have another op a good operating system on this computer that once had none. And so back to this one. And so basically, like I said, malware or the malware bytes program, we have the old program, we're keeping the old program simply because we don't want all these gadgets running in the background. We don't want these pop-ups, you know. They will keep continue they will continue to warn us and say, "Hey, we've got a new program." The new program, basically, uh, it's an improved program. I'm sure it's probably easier, uh, has a better interface, uh, and easier to understand, it's sort of simplified. But the other thing is it, it's a little bit confusing sometimes um, about renewing. If you push the wrong button, all of a sudden you'll have to be paying for the version of the software. So I'm keeping the old one just because I don't want more pop-ups. I'm going to have, it'll have one pop-up that will continue to pop up, but you just click it down. The new version, I believe, it will it will pop up. You click it down, it will go down, and then a little while later, it'll pop up again and say, hey, the new version's ready, and click it down. I, I don't know how many times, but I know I've had to click it down twice on my new version. I have used the new version just because you know, if if I had some extra money, if they had a um, stand outside, I would donate money to them because it's been a good program for me. The other program is Microsoft Security Essentials. Microsoft Security Essentials, actually, I found that it did interfere with one program. I believe that what happened is it screwed up the it screwed up the desktop. It it may have been on a Vista program, a Vista Windows, but it may have been uh, corrected by then, by now too. So, but it did. Microsoft Security Essentials screwed up one of my desktops. Basically, it it went blank on me. I'd have the mouse, but there's nothing nothing there to click on. So anyway, yeah, that's. This is uh, the Linux Mint, and um, once again, we have it hooked onto the internet, so that basically it's going to go. Okay, 
This is a new computer. We're putting it on. It'll load the drivers to this machine, basically. It loads the extra drivers when it has it hooked up to the internet. Configuring bootloader. So it's it's doing all these things. It's uh, um, it's talking to my computer basically through the internet and through whatever uh, Linux uh, uh, servers. And so, yeah, I was actually wanted to install Deep In, which is another operating Linux operating system. This is a Chinese version of, of Linux Mint, but Linux Mint is fairly easy to use. I'm familiar with it. Deep In, I, I've used it a couple times. I like it. Uh, my teacher likes it, and so, but I may install it later, but for now, we're just going to go with Linux Mint here. So anyway, that's your little computer tech tip for today. Thanks for watching. Um, if you need any help, you can contact me at laptopsrepaired at yahoo.com. Laptopsrepaired at yahoo.com. Rate, comment, and subscribe.